I think when Irish audiences come in to see Rigoletto, I think they're going to get a bit of a surprise because there's nothing like what you might expect. You know, for people who know the opera and who've been to maybe to see Rigoletto a number of times, traditionally it's set in the 16th century in Italy and Rigoletto is a court jester to the Duke. We've got rid of all that. So it's set now in the 1980s in Dublin and the Duke is his name, he's like a criminal Duke, like you have the Viper or the Monk or the General, he's the Duke. And uh, all the guys are his henchmen, Rigoletto is one of his henchmen. What we've done by updating it like that, we're, we're still trying to preserve really the relationship between all the principal characters, which I think is really at the heart, but it's wrapped in completely new clothes. There are many English translations of Rigoletto and my my job really was to air it out a bit because a lot of the translations are in very formal English and in English that doesn't sit very well on the Irish ear. Well, I hope we've brought in some nuance. Um, you've the Duke, you've Rigoletto, you've very male chorus. The whole sound of this opera is incredibly male. And then you've this beautiful young girl, Gilda, in the middle of it. We've had such a laugh and such a great time and it's such a big thing for me but to have such amazing cast members and amazing singers, Bruno Caproni, I mean I'm just privileged to be singing on the stage with him, he's fantastic. Everyone has been incredible and has really made the whole thing really enjoyable, really big role. Fergus has been a great uh, mentor and support. So for this production of Rigoletto we've put together an amazing cast and we're really excited about it because we have Bruno Caproni singing the role of Rigoletto and Bruno uh, is from Northern Ireland originally but his parents were Italian and uh, but he's sung all around the world. Like his, his CV is unbelievable when you read all the things he's done and to think that an artist of that caliber is on the road touring around with us that's really really exciting and then at the other end of the spectrum we have Emma Nash who's a very young soprano she's 20 and she's from Cork and an amazing beautiful voice. We have a Brazilian tenor, uh, Luciano Botello, and he's like a fantastic charismatic guy, really good looking, you know, dashing, and he sings like fantastically. So he's like all you could want. So when you get the top three cast members in an opera really right, you know, you're, it's, it's fantastic. And then in the orchestra, we have a 12-piece orchestra. In the strings, we have the RTE Contempo Quartet, and they're an amazing ensemble, and they bring a, huge, a great level of expertise to the orchestral playing. And then we have, uh, as well, then wind and brass section, and it's a reduced orchestration from the original so that we can tour it to all the venues around the country. I think the Irish public should come and see this opera because it's about the passions, and the passions are all we have. We're not rational creatures. The music is sublime. The performances are sublime. The direction is sublime. So why not? This is a production and an interpretation that you will never probably get an opportunity to see again. Um, it's uh, sexy, it's uh, crazy, it's dark, it's moving, it's passionate. Just, it's a fantastic opera. The music is amazing, but on top of that, you have a really, really interesting concept. Why do any of us come to the arts or to film or to anything like that? You know, we, we want to escape out of our own lives. We want to enter in for a two, two and a half hour period. We want to enter into this magical world. And then at the end of it, hopefully come out and in some way think, well, there's something in there that I can think about in my life. Um, as I go on, because I, I really think there is a lot to think about in regular. <laughs>